William Shakespeare, you may know, wrote 39 plays. An entire theatre company, the Royal Shakespeare, devoted itself to his output. Charles Dickens wrote 19 novels. But as Nicholas Nickleby has just been triumphantly adapted for the stage, why not a theatrical company devoted to the works of Dickens? Well, that provocative idea set off a tale of mystery and imagination that Dickens would surely have loved and to which Newsnight is now able to provide the denouement. Ian Smith takes up the whole story. The whole thing began on the night of June the 30th as critics and public arrived here at the Aldwych for the first night of the RSC's latest offering, an adaptation of Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. Now, nobody then realised what an enormous success the whole thing was going to be. And afterwards, when the critics reached for their pens, they could hardly contain their superlatives. But there were those who believed that the RSC's evident delight at their splendid success might make them equally vulnerable to a splendid hoax. A series of letters were composed purporting to come from the head of the RSC, Trevor Nunn. Dear Terry, I'm sorry to spring this on you, but I've instituted a major policy change. The whole experience of Nicholas Nickleby was such a source of joy and inspiration. In fact, it was for me a spiritual cleansing that I'm clear in what has to be done. I'm sure the potential audience for lively Dickens, in fact, far exceeds that for the Bard. And let's face it, Terry, it's much more fun. What was the first indication you had that you were beginning to play a part in somebody else's play? Well, I took a short break once Nicholas Nickleby was successfully launched. And uh, when I got back from this holiday, I went around to see my colleague, John Barton. And um, he said, uh, thought your Dickens letter was delightful. Um, Dickens letter, John, I haven't written to you for a month. And he said, you know, the, the, the Royal Dickens Company letter, the, the offer that you made to me about uh, completing Edwin Drood, so the document was produced and um, it was very convincing there to all intents and purposes was the company logo but significantly changed um, so I was very amused by that and um, John and I speculated about who it could possibly be and uh, that weekend I got a message from Peter Hall via Peggy Ashcroft that Peter had been delighted by my Martin Chuzzlewit offer. Oh dear. I, I began to understand that it was um, a hoax that was covering a fairly wide scale. But at the end of that uh, month, uh, which, was, which coincided with the last performances of Nicholas Nickleby at the Aldrich, um, uh, the post disappeared. <laughs> uh, all of the Nicholas Nickleby posters were covered by Little Dorrit posters, uh, our forthcoming attraction. If you met the man who's done this to you, what would you say to him? <laughs> Shall I throw down a gauntlet? Suggest that we should clash at dawn. And this is the man responsible. He holds the Guinness Book of Records record for the longest play ever put on. And he's also known for putting ferrets down trouser legs. He is Ken Campbell. Ken, this is a pretty active ferret that you dropped on the RSC. What on earth gave you the idea? Uh, well, well, gave, I, when you say gave me the idea, it sounds like it was some sort of rational escapade, this. Uh, what inspired it, really, was the, uh, the excellence of the Nicholas Nickleby production. You did actually uh, see it? Oh, yes, yes, I saw the, saw, saw the entire thing, yes. Uh, I thought, yes, it was absolutely amazing. Anyway, but, but, but what happened to me as a result of seeing was I was charged with energy, you see, and I, I, I first assumed that uh, I was meant to write a, write a fan letter about it and to alert the world to it. But then it seems silly if you start to write it uh, coherently and straight, you know, like, Dear Bill Gaskell, have you seen... Uh, Nicholas Nickleby. I think you should go there and take some notes. You can't write letters like that. But and it occurred to me that this is what they should do. How long did it take you to get, you, to get it all together? You know, all the posters and the letters and so on? Well, not very long. A couple of days. Some people were pretty <laughs> impressed by your style and said that you'd captured something very special there. Thank you. 
Do you really think that Trevor Nunn is quite as uh, precious as you make him out to be in those letters? Well, I don't think we made him out to be precious. Uh, no, I, I, I felt in the letters uh, we gave him uh, a, a rather montard of life. Well, you said uh, to, go out, to, to, go out, to go out and grab a great idea, which he, I mean, he, he uh, has come up with, to go out, there, go out there, grab it and take it and do it. You wrote one letter to Norman St. John Stevens purporting to come from uh, Trevor Nunn. You said, mm. any thoughts you have on this will, will, as always, be treasured. Love, Trev. A little bit precious. Well, we wrote Love, Trev on all the letters. Did you really expect people to take it quite as seriously as clearly they did? Because some people wrote back to Trevor Nunn and said that they'd like to take part in any new plays that he was putting on. I didn't think anyone would get past the third line. Which was the best letter, do you think, that you wrote? Oh, the, the, what, the best letter? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'd like, rather than tell you the best letter, there's the, 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 many, many letters. I'll tell you what it's like, though, is, is like, what I haven't told you is really what it's like. It's like you, you're about to write a fan letter and then a little grinning person appears to the right or left. You look around and if you just see it, you know that you mustn't look a lot. And then the, uh, the grinning person leads you on, you know? The little grinning person. And then uh, when we went and put the posters up, that was the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the end of that play for me. Um, because then we became the little grinning perfect people. Ken Campbell, little grinning person, thank you very much indeed. Good night. Marvellous spoof. I think it's actually rather a good idea. Uh, a final last news item. Not, of course, that the Royal Shakespeare Company should be killed, but the other one. A final last news item.